So with the uh, SRT5, this is uh, uh, making uh, the line array uh, product lineup uh, a little bit bigger for us. The idea of the SRT5 is to make a very simple installation in um, these typical gymnasiums that we have in the school marketplace. If you're familiar with the HX5, the SRT5 is a continuation of that sort of technology. And basically, the T5 is two HX5s uh, in one complete package. Uh, so the two units are more or less welded together in more or less a 35-degree mode uh, for the vertical dispersion. So if we look at the features of the uh, T5, you can see that it is a line array. And of course, line arrays uh, are very suitable for uh, reverberant spaces. And this was designed specifically for the school market uh, because of the simple uh, installation requirements uh, for the school market. Uh, the T5 is very easy to install. You just basically hang it up on a wall. Uh, and of course, uh, we're going to get the, the speech intelligibility, uh, excellent uh, speech intelligibility with the unit because it does act as a line array. We're not exciting the reverberant field uh, in the gymnasium. So we're always going to get uh, very good uh, front to back uh, SPL coverage uh, in the room, which is going to give us uh, a good speech intelligibility. We're going to keep that energy off the wall. Of course, it's a two-speaker system. We have a, a woofer and some tweeters inside, and we'll take a look at the uh, complement of speakers uh, a little bit later on. Uh, also, uh, because of the, uh, the way it's built, it's a very high-impact uh, plastic. The front uh, punch net or the grill is steel. It's going to take a, a, a hit from a basketball or a baseball or whatever. You, it's, it's going to be very difficult to damage this product, so uh, it's a very suitable for the gymnasium um, uh, marketplace. Um, because of that high impact uh, resistance, we're, we don't need an additional cage. Quite often when we get into the school market, we have to put a, an additional wire cage around the speakers to keep the kids from destroying it. You will not have to do this uh, with this particular product. It's operating uh, from a single amplifier. It does have a crossover inside, so uh, there's uh, no need to buy amp this. Uh, no DSP is required. The engineers looked at the market and decided that we needed a speaker that was full range, good quality sound, uh, with no uh, digital signal processing at all. And, and um, uh, this helps us to keep the cost of these installs into the school marketplace uh, down. Of course, as I said, it's, it's wall mount. It's very simple. You just uh, drill some uh, holes, put up the bracket, and it slips right on the wall. We can tilt this product uh, down uh, a couple of degrees, uh, one, two, and three degree increments. Uh, this allows us to adjust uh, varying heights uh, of the speaker in the room, but maintaining the same coverage uh, uh, across the audience plane. And if we put in the, an optional transformer, we can run this at a 100 volt or a 70 volt. Uh, by default, it's uh, an 8 ohm speaker. As I said, the installation is very simple wall mount. Uh, it has a curved uh, speaker complement. Uh, this allows us to cover the near field and the far field. And, uh, of course, with this uh, very narrow vertical directivity, it's 35 degrees, this allows us to keep the energy off the ceiling and off the uh, floors up front. And this, uh, again, uh, helps to prevent exciting the reverberant field in, in these uh, no, rooms to a uh, gymnasium. A webinar. Have a very high RT. Uh, I haven't seen that today. Or have I? I haven't been here much today. If we look at the uh, specifications for the speaker, it is a base reflex design. In other words, it is a ported design. Um, currently, we only have the indoor model, and it is black only. So there's only one model to, to choose from. Power handling-wise, we have a 250 watts continuous pink noise. Uh, that's 100% uh, band-limited pink noise. You can produce 250 watts. But in the real world, we look at the continuous program, and this is 750 watts. 
if we look at that 750 watts and uh, produce uh, it into the speaker, we're going to get about 128 dB of sound pressure about a meter away from the speaker. Uh, again, as I said, it's an 8-ohm speaker. The sensitivity is always important with speakers. Uh, this particular unit, uh, the T5, is a 96 dB for 1 watt, about 4 meters away. Because of the curved nature, uh, the spec is slightly different. Uh, we take that reading about uh, 4 meters away to account for the fact that it is a curved speaker. Frequency response is uh, reasonably flat from 7 to 20 kilohertz. Again, uh, this is a performance with no digital signal processing. The crossover uh, built in for the two uh, speaker uh, drivers inside is set at uh, 3 kilohertz. This gets it out of the voice band of importance, which is around 2 kilohertz. And as I said, the directivity angle for the vertical is 35, and the horizontal is 100 degrees. So we have very good uh, directivity control over this speaker. We continue on with the specifications. You can see uh, that each cabinet has uh, a one five-inch driver and three dome tweeters. So one cell is one driver of a five inch in size and three dome tweeters. So if we look at the whole unit, the whole complete unit, we have eight low frequency drivers and 24 dome tweeters. The finish on this, uh, the front is uh, a front uh, is a plastic. It's a polypropylene black plastic, very tough uh, material. The grill is steel, and the rest of the box is, is made out of wood. And, of course, this is all black. Uh, as I said before, we can tilt the unit down through a couple of degrees, and I'll show that later on uh, when we start to tilt this uh, for the different uh, mounting heights. We can also, with an optional bracket, uh, tilt the unit uh, left and uh, right 5 or 10 degrees. Now, this product does weigh a fair amount, uh, at 64 pounds. It may take two people to load this into position. However, we do provide a hoisting eyelet uh, so that you can secure a hoisting strap to it and lift it into position onto the uh, brackets. As you can see, the dimensions uh, are 49 inches high. That's approximately four feet in height by about a foot wide and a, and a little over a foot deep. So this is a fairly substantial speaker. Uh, it's probably going to take two people uh, to muscle this into position. We have some protection for the drivers. Uh, for the tweeters, uh, we have a, an over-voltage protection. Uh, that will reset itself in 10 seconds once the signal level is uh, down into the normal operating range. If we look at the included accessories, there's two brackets supplied uh, with the unit. There's a top bracket and a bottom bracket, and these mount on the wall uh, with the um, uh, bolts that you will supply. You basically drill into the wall, uh, mount these brackets, and then uh, mount the speaker uh, onto the brackets and secure it with these uh, bracket bolts that are supplied, the six of them. There are uh, side covers. Uh, it will become obvious a little bit later as I show you some other pictures uh, to cover up the bracket access ports and also the cable access holes. As I mentioned earlier, there is an eye bolt uh, provided for hoisting the speaker into position, and please, by all means, do not use this for permanent mounting. It was not intended to uh, hold the speaker up uh, for flying purposes. And there's also one safety cable uh, supplied. Once the speaker is put into position, uh, the cable is fastened to the wall and to the speaker, and uh, that should uh, help prevent it fall down should there be any major disaster. We look at the optional accessories, uh, the wall bracket to allow us to tilt it left and right 5 or 10 degrees is the SR-PB5. 
I'll show you a, a little picture later on how this mounts onto the existing bracket. So this will allow us to uh, tilt the speaker in towards the audience plane. If we wanted to run at uh, 100 volts or a 70 volt instead of the 8 ohm low impedance that the speaker uh, is originally designed for, we can add in the MT-S0601 transformer. And this mounts inside the speaker, uh, so it's out of the way and uh, cannot be seen once it's mounted in. We look at the dimensions again, this gives you a better idea of, of the shape of the unit and you can see that the, it's four feet high uh, by about a uh, foot wide and uh, about uh, just over a foot deep. And uh, for the uh, mounting of the transformer, there's an access plate in the back. The transformer uh, goes inside once you remove the access plate and then uh, you put the plate back on and you're good to go. You can see the access slots on the back of the speaker for mounting the brackets. There's four locations for these. And these are the side covers for hiding the bracket uh, access points. And there's also a built-in handle for lifting uh, the unit into place. If we look at uh, how we wire the unit, and since it's going flat on the wall, uh, we've provided access points on the side of the speaker. This makes it easy to uh, get at the wiring. Uh, once the speaker's in place, we can uh, connect our wiring. If there's problems with the wiring, we can disconnect. We can test our wiring. Uh, so this is a very handy way of uh, making that connection once the unit's up on the wall. And then once it is mounted, we've got a, a, a plate that will cover up that hole so it blends in nicely and you can't see the uh, cable, etc. And through the back, you can see there's a spot, uh, a slot on the back where the wiring will come out of the wall and into that access position for the cabling. The supplied brackets, uh, the ones in orange here, as you can see, we uh, mount them to the wall uh, through the, uh, using bolts, uh, concrete bolts if the, the wall is concrete. Again, these uh, speakers are very heavy, so if you're going on anything other than concrete, make sure you have a suitable mounting uh, surface for this type of speaker. Uh, once the brackets are mounted onto the wall, then uh, you simply hoist the speaker up. You can see we provided that eyelet uh, for hoisting the speaker up into position. We slide the speaker onto the brackets in this fashion. And then we secure uh, using bolts onto the side of the bracket. And that will give us a flat uh, mounting position for the speaker. Um, flat on the wall, there's no angle at all. Uh, either up or down. Now, if we wanted to tilt the uh, unit there on the side of the bracket, there are the three positions for one degree, two degree, and three degrees on the top bracket. This will allow us to tilt the uh, speaker down should we have to mount the unit much higher than uh, the standard four meters in height. If we look at the optional side bracket, this will give us one more uh, pivot point that allows us to uh, angle the speaker at 5 or 10 degrees in towards the audience plane. If we look at the front-to-back performance of the speaker, uh, and again, this was uh, typically designed for a school gymnasium that might be about 20 meters deep, approximately 60 feet, you can see that with the line array technology, we're only down about 6.7 dB uh, from front to back, from the highest peak to the lowest peak at the back. So you're going to find that we have very good coverage uh, front to back with the T5. And again, this is mounted at uh, approximately 4 meters off the floor. If we look at the uh, typical mounting heights, here's the, the uh, 4 meters uh, that's uh, recommended for the mounting height. And you can see the, the area that we're covering 
uh, with uh, this particular height. And as we go up in height, uh, we're going to start tilting the speaker down. And this will allow us to maintain the uh, consistent audience playing uh, with the speaker, even though now we are going up uh, in height. So you can see uh, we've gone from 4 meters to 4.5 meters. And we're still covering the same audience plane. Again, uh, we're going up 5 meters in this case and 5.5 meters. And you can see we've increased the angle of tilt as we uh, continue further up into uh, the ceiling. And this will help maintain the, the uh, same coverage plane.